Yeah, so like Vesta is saying, this is the, the second week in, in the series for building your custom engine agent with the Teams AI library. So if you missed uh, last week, go ahead and check out the, the video posted online to, to catch up. But we'll also be diving through just more detail. So this is a, a big uh, chunk in, in the series right here for building your app. So even if you didn't see last week, this is a good one to pick up on too. All right. And so we're going to start out with just doing a, a quick recap on what we were doing uh, you know, last week, as well with additional context and details, because when you're building your custom engine agents, uh, you, there's layers and layers that you can go deeper to, to perfecting your agents and your apps and adding on capabilities. We'll go continue our build. Last week, we were going just over the, the general um, uh, Teams toolkit uh you know sample scaffolding and, and just running right with with that today we'll actually be using our own custom uh data that we're adding to it and actually specializing to our agent to make it be a financial analyst so it's it's very exciting and relevant work to really get started in building your first agent and then uh i'll end with just showing a link on how you can get started with that today so if we remember last week uh, three big things to look at for when you're thinking about your agent. So one, it's they're very good at chatting with your data, retrieving information, which is also what we'll be diving more in today and building. So it's being able to take multiple different uh, desperate data sources and then put them together for instant analysis to save analysts or other uh, people uh, hours and, and searching through those data sets to then get insights on it and pull it together in easy to uh, way to just chat and go through with your data. Then you have the next level, which is performing tasks, which on teams specifically, you could have, uh, you know, be chatting in, in a meeting and then uh, be sharing a, a model and then control the stage via natural language and perform other tasks via natural language. So there's ways that you can expedite tasks, automate them, or just enhance collaboration. And specifically with, uh, with thinking about collaborative agents on Teams, that's where you can go through and think about these other surfaces for meetings beyond just chat and how you can expand those workflows. And so that's kind of the next step of your agent. Uh, and then last at Ignite is where you're beginning to see, you know, the real agents emerge where it's looking at long-term planning. And that's where we had Northwind Traders go forward and then do a five-step process of reordering from a supplier, getting financial approvals, placing that order and giving updates along the way. And that's where everything is going towards and where you can go and build uh, from beginning chatting with your data tasks uh, uh, via natural language to then full on automation, big longer term planning. So that's the idea of what you're going with with agents and with custom engine agents in particular, uh, versus, uh, you have con complete control of the stack from every uh, from the foundational models, orchestrator and the knowledge, skills, autonomy. And then you can go and launch on Microsoft Teams or in Microsoft 365 Copilot. And that is in comparison to declarative agents where it is based on uh, Copilot's underlying um, underlying model as well as orchestrator. So declarative agents may be, uh, can be a fast, powerful way to get started, whereas custom engine agents, you have full control all the time on your stack and your build, that which makes it very exciting for developers and, and going in and really fine tuning the experience that you want to have with your users. And then last week, like I was saying, we got started with the Teams Toolkit extension for Visual Studio Code. We have these great templates to really accelerate your build. And that's where we're going to be continuing on this week and, uh, you know, going through our agent checklist. And then instead of just using the regular Teams Toolkit template, we're going to actually go through and pick out our build each step of the way 
from building a financial analyst agent that is going to go through and be connected with Microsoft uh, earnings call data that we had from last quarter and then be able to analyze and reason upon that data that you could see providing to your entire organization as well as specifically a, fi a finance team to go and look through and, and uh, quickly go back and forth with an agent to uh, to gather insights and figure out what are some of the opportunities from either Microsoft, but then when you're thinking about yourself, you can think about many other data sources beyond this, many other companies for com competitive analysis, figure out how your specific product group is doing overall, but there's lots of opportunities there. So we'll go ahead and dive into it with adding in our data, doing a specialized prompt, picking out our model and then getting uh, all those things with the feedback loop, everything that we touched on last week, but then actually going through this week for ourselves. Now, uh, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Um, so like I was saying, we start out in uh, Visual Studio Code, and then we have the Teams Toolkit extension right here that you can get, and then you can go and like we were doing last week, create a new app, custom engine agent, basic AI chatbot, TypeScript, and then you get a pick between which one do you want from Azure OpenAI models or OpenAI, and then enter in your keys, endpoints, and uh, from there. And uh, now I've already done it for, for this week's one, uh, and then, but if you need to go uh, on a deep dive on how to gather that info, you can look at last week's call or we'll go a little bit more today. So now we're just with our basic uh, template here that you get scaffolded together. And then the first thing, one of the first things you wanna do is we go back to our prompts prompts.txt. So you, when you get started, there is a very basic prompt. And these are the instructions for your agent. And so right now it says you are an AI bot that can chat with users. Now to really get into specializing it, and this is what brings the power of these agents, is you have a good prompt. Now for a financial analyst uh, agent, uh, you, you can think about many things. Uh, a little hint, uh, you can even go and use Copilot or ChatGPT and go and say, hey, I'm building this agent. What's a great prompt to use for it? These are my goals. And then use natural language uh, to go and build the prompt for your own agent. And so here we have beyond just the basic one, it's saying a uh, financial analyst with deep expertise, as well as have uh, focusing on the financial highlights, major announcements or product updates, forward-looking insights and competitive analysis. A lot more detail and focus to provide for our agent. And then next, when you want to add your data, what we can go back and do is we'll be going back uh, to going back to Azure uh, AI Foundry. So we touched on this before last week with deployments on how to deploy your model and. I have a preference for GPT-40 Mini, which I think is a great fast model. And then this week, uh, we'll be going through and then we can go and add our data. And so that will be the focus here. And so all you have to do, click to add your data, and then you have multiple different data sources you can choose from. If you already have data uh, in Azure and Azure AI Search, you can select that option as well. It, you have also the choice of going directly from URL or website and then blob storage cosmos db and then if you're just starting out and you want to try it i think just uploading some quick files it makes it really easy so it selects the azure subscription so you need to uh, have azure subscription there you, it's free to sign up for if you don't have one and then you create a blob storage which i've already created and then the azure uh, ai search resource which i've already created here but you can just click on these links if you need to create one off the bat and then you can do uh, a name for your uh, index and then vector search is a way to really power up uh, you know the the accuracy um, of your search later on because it vectorizes all the data but right now for simplicity we're just going to go ahead and move forward and so right here for uh, clicking to upload the data i've already just from the microsoft site already picked out and downloaded the files 
uh, from Microsoft and on my computer. And now we're uploading them up to the cloud. So then we go through upload in progress. We have the upload here and all the files successfully uploaded. We can just click through here and determine what type of search. So keyword is your basic, basic keyword search where semantic gets another layer of actually understanding the language. So you, I would say you definitely want to at least go over semantic or vector. And then there's chunking sizes that takes the granularity of what data uh, of, of the chunks of data that your model takes through. But you can dive in deeper with all these links here if you're curious. And then last for the data connection, there's different types. API key is the quickest, easiest way to get started. System assigned managed identity can give a more uh, comprehensive uh, auth uh, option. And so you can go through here. And what ends up happening is uh, right Azure AI Foundry ingest the data will go through process it all for you and then when that's done ingesting which can take a minute or two so i've already got it loaded up here uh, you end up getting something like this where you have your uploaded files uh, the index name as well as a search and then you can have some advanced uh, settings for the strictness as well as how many documents you want to retrieve for a response but for actually for our build uh, when you want to go through and get your data, uh, since we selected key uh, authentication before, we can go to the key authentication and we have our usual endpoint, our regular uh, API key model. But then at the top, um, we also have uh, in here, you can see we have our search endpoint right here that you have to go and look through. And then um, there is also a search uh, API key as well in here. And so you would be grabbing that. And then when we go back to our uh, template, now what we can go through here um, is go back to the config.json. And this is where we can add in our data source. And so just for uh, just for the demo, of course, I'm not putting in my own API key here, but you would just be entering okay Azure search our index name that we had created name before the endpoint, the key, and then uh, we have our data all connected to our template. So that's great and an easy way to get set up and started. And then for the next part, then we can go to our app.ts. And then you remember last week, uh, you know, we had the feedback loop and we were the thumbs up, thumbs down. So right here, we have uh, the part of the logic for the feedback loop and you're allowed to then, one of the things is connect the feedback loop actually to uh, data sources. So you can actually save your data to your feedback. Right now, well, with this, we're just gonna have it go sent to the console uh so that we can see live some of the feedback and we'll be entering in that feedback and then one last thing we can do with code which is nice is we can have our extra little bits of customizations so here i'm adding in the specific azure api version that i want to go through and utilize for our build which is 2024 02 uh, you can go and tweak other things that you want such as that that's the joy of a pro code customization if there's a specific version or variation and then the last thing that we're going to do is in the manifest manifest.json file, we can customize some of our zero prompts. So here we have pre-built in, uh, how can, can you, uh, you help me, how to develop a Teams Toolkit app, but what you can actually do is then decide just to replace that. You know, again, I'm copying and pasting just for uh, ease of, of uh, doing this. And, and a little bit of speed too. So here we go. I'm changing this for uh, to analyze Microsoft's earning call because we have a financial analyst earnings. Uh, and you know, just a little thank you on the call. So these zero prompts are will pop up first when using your agent, as well as people can reference it later for quick uh, engagement with your app. And so with those couple things already, uh, we can go ahead and then. 
uh, you know, start debugging. And one thing uh, that you want to do with the Teams Toolkit is you log in to your N365 account right here and make sure that you have custom app uploading enabled. So uh, if, if you don't, you can go in and, and dive through. At the end, I'll, I'll share a link with, with a more detailed follow through on how to get that enabled that you can go through. But that will set you up to then go through debug in Teams. And then uh, if you hit debug, then that starts running it, uh, running the debug process. But I've already got this up real quick uh, just for time. And so you can see here we have our Teams AI earnings call analyst. So you just click that zero prompt like we were just talking about before. And then you can go ahead, send real quick already. And then let's go ahead. It's live. Let's see if it goes through and, and works. So it's you can see the response is, is coming. And look at that. That's a really great detailed answer that's customized based on that data we uploaded from Microsoft's earnings call uh with where we see 65.6 billion in total revenue 16 increase uh, so it's lots of great stuff going on here good year for microsoft and then a lot of this was driven by our ai business uh which is uh you know establishing it as the fastest growing segment in the company's history so one a big thank you to all of you for building agents and helping propel this but then it also goes to show how much value uh, that we're bringing with AI and agents across the entire world. And then your piece, you're able to get incredible analysis right here with detailed uh, citations off of our data and then have those discussions with your agent. And then since it's Teams, it's not just one-on-one. -on -one. You can also go through the same similar thing where you're adding an agent to a channel uh, so the whole team can interact with it. So it's very exciting to go through and build. And, uh, you know, and so that is our agent build today with uh, going through their our custom data. And so the very last part that I say here is just with adding on single sign on. Uh, to make it one of the nice benefits of, of Teams and N365, you're already logged in into Teams. So how to get that authentication, a quick way to do it is definitely recommend single sign-on as a great option. So users don't have to re-log into your agent if you're already logged into Teams. And then the Teams AI library can easily implement this along with bot framework uh, to utilize that auth. And then if you're looking to get started today, Go ahead, go and use this bit.ly link for the Copilot uh, Camp uh, Agent Lab, and then this will get you started with going through everything that I just showed you today, along with uh, things like auth and, and then adding in additional actions. So highly encourage everyone to go through that, but that is the, the demo today, and then we'll be diving into more stuff next week. Thanks so much, everyone.